is still going crazy for comic book movies, and with the return of Spider-Man in the new Captain America Civil War movie, this time done by Marvel Disney, it's just further proof that the world loves the little web slinger. We all just can't get enough of Spider-Man. This, the new Captain America movie, is the web slinger's sixth appearance in 14 years. You've got cartoons, comics, obviously, and possibly the most sought after kids dressing up outfit for boys ever. And then, of course, you got the video games. Spider-Man for the 2600. So, in true Slopes Game Room fashion, and to help build up my personal hype for the release of this upcoming Marvel movie, I, DJ Slope, will be looking at the very first game based on Spider-Man. Video games, assemble. So this is actually quite a special video. Spider-Man for the Atari 2600 is not only the first ever Spider-Man game, it's the first ever Marvel video game ever. I'll blow this town to smithereens. I found. Try to get up there in time, Spider-Man. What <laughs> become my web, Goblin? Watch yourself fall, Silk Slinger. Can't stop the bombs in time. If I don't get you webhead by day, you now this will. Holy hell. And you're running out of fluid. <laughs> Is this more action than even Spider-Man can handle? Whoa! <laughs> Spider-Man, a video game from Parker Brothers, the ones to beat. Wait, what? Parker Brothers? The board game people? As in Monopoly, Risk, Sorry and Cluedo? That's Clue to my American buddies. Yep, the board game giants actually had a go at making games. To be fair, most of the time they were just porting other people's games. But in this instance, they had a crack at making one. There was even plans for a Hulk game. But unfortunately the game was never released. There are pictures, but there's not even a ROM. But thankfully, Spider-Man was released. Just look at the cover art. This is old school Spider-Man artwork. Any fan of that 1960s cartoon and or comics will definitely want to pick this one up. Now before looking at the game itself, I want you all to take yourself back to the 80s. You're a young kid, possibly very much into Marvel, and this bad boy is not only your first game system, it's highly likely that your parents and your grandparents would also be seeing the first video games ever with this. You see, the Atari 2600 pretty much dominated the second console generation, and before this, you've got the first generation, which is pretty much just a Pong ripoff. Try and get yourself sucked into the atmosphere of a game like this. Sure, it's great for the time, but it is essentially just a competitive puzzle game. Now moving up to the Atari 2600, a whole generation ahead, you really start to get sucked into and feel like you are the character on the screen. Sure your imagination had to fill in the pixels that the 8-bit system couldn't, but this game played together with this game cover was all a young lad needed back in the 80s. A perfect blend of gameplay skill mixed with your imagination. It really did make this generation something truly special. And in my mind, it's the reason that retro gamers like myself still cling on to games that by today's standards really do look a little bit naff. We fill in the blanks with our imagination and that's why everyone says that the book is always better than the movie. Thankfully, this game really does a good job of planting a seed in your head and even better plays and looks, obviously for the time, pretty damn good. There's no mistaking that this game is a Spider-Man game. Your job is to get all the way to the top of this building by using your web slinging abilities. You can only grab hold of the building and not the windows or blank spaces which obviously gets a lot trickier when the area is full of girders. At the bottom of the screen you'll see that your web slinging ability is slowly running out and the only way to slightly fill it up is by catching random villains found on many floors as you go up the building. You also need to dodge the green goblin which again looks great who's moving left and right as well as planting bombs to get in Spider-Man's way. And you do all this so you can get to the very top and disarm a bomb. Once completed, in true Atari 2600 fashion, you do it all again. And again. And again. And again. And again. 
Now, like I said, Spider-Man has appeared in a crazy amount of video games since this one. And only seven years after this game, he actually appeared in the first ever Marvel video crossover game with Captain America. The future is bright for the Uncle Ben loving web slinger, which, if you ask me, is nothing but a good thing. Personally, I can't get enough of Peter Parker. Here's to plenty more movies, plenty more comics, and of course, plenty more video games. Video games, assemble! Hey guys, thanks for checking out my video on Spider-Man's first ever appearance. I'm just here to tell you that this video is actually the fifth video in a six part series, covering not only the first ever Spider-Man game, but also the first ever Captain America game, the first ever Hulk, Thor, Iron Man, and finally, The Avengers. Leading up to the release of what is probably one of my most anticipated films of the year, Captain America Civil War. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any. If you want to help the show, check out my Patreon to see videos like this a week early and see some exclusive content. Follow me on social media by searching for Slope's Game Room. And that's it. This is DJ Slope signing out. And hopefully, I'll see you all next time.